on the day of the Feast of the Annunciation of Our Lady, the Incarnation of Our Lord, and uh, the occasion of the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Father, is that the Holy Ghost? Amen. 1917, almost 100 years ago, more than 90 years ago, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared in Fatima on July the 13th, and she said that she wanted Russia, she was going to ask for Russia to be consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. God wishes, to, she said on July the 13th, 1917, God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. If what I say to you is, is, is done, many souls will be saved and there will be peace. The, war, the First World War is going to end. If people do not cease offending God, a worse one will break out during the pontificate of Pius XI. When you see a knight illumined by an unknown light, know that this is the great sign given you by God that he is about to punish the world for its crimes by means of war, famine, and persecution of the Church and of the Holy Father. To prevent this, I shall come to ask for the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart. If my requests are heeded, Russia will be converted. And there will be peace. If not, she will spread her errors throughout the world, causing war wars and persecutions of the church. The good will be martyred. The Holy Father will have much to suffer. And various nations will be annihilated. In the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. The Holy Father will consecrate Russia to me, and she will be converted, and a period of peace shall be granted to the world. And then later on in, in 1929, the Blessed Virgin Mary came to, our, to Sister Lucia and said, Now is the time to ask for this consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart. And, and until today, it has not been fulfilled. And then Our Lady said later on, They have not chosen to, they have not chosen to heed my request. As the King of France, they will regret it and then will do it. But it will be too late. Russia will have already spread her errors throughout the world. Provoking wars and persecutions against the church, the Holy Father will have much to suffer. So our Blessed Mother said in, the, in, the, in, in Fatima that she wanted Russia to be consecrated in order that, 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 that it did not spread its errors throughout the world. And she spoke of the conversion of Russia when the consecration is done. But then later on she told Sister Lucy that it will be done, but it will be too late. So we seem to have a double message here. One is it will be done late and there will be a consecration, a conversion of Russia. And the other, she says, it will be too late. Today on March 25th, 2022, Pope Francis, in union with the bishops throughout the world, is consecrating Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary for the first time fulfilling the request of Our Lady of Fatima. So Our Lady made this request almost 100 years ago. And during this time, there's been a great crisis of faith. There's been a great crisis in the church. Many souls have been lost throughout the world, and Russia has spread its errors. Had, Saint, had Pius XI and Pius XII, or the popes previous <clears throat> to the last few years, consecrated Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, then her errors would not have spread throughout the entire world. And so when she says it's too late, in the second message she says to Sister, it'll be too late when he consecrates. Not too late for the conversion, not too late for the victory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, but too late for the spreading of the errors. Because Our Lady gave a response and an answer. And the answer is, the Holy Father, in union with the, with the bishops of the Church, must consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in order to stop the spread of the errors of Russia, communism, modernism, evolutionism, the great heresies that have destroyed our world. And the popes did not listen. Pius XI had a different plan in how to fight against communism. Pius XII had a different plan they had their plans and did not want to follow, like Father Gruner said, they did not want to follow heaven's peace plan. Everyone had a different plan. We will negotiate with the Russians. We will try to, uh, to show them another way to peace than the Blessed Virgin Mary, another way to peace in the Immaculate Heart of Mary, another way to peace in the Holy Roman Catholic Church. But even in our wicked 20th century, and now 21st century, God wants to make it very clear that a priest is a man taken amongst men for those things that appertain to God. And the priest must weep for the sins of the people. And the priest must speak in the name of the people. 
And the priest not only speaks in the name of God, but he also speaks in the name of the people. He is truly the mediator, the pontifex. A bishop is called a pontifex. Pontifex means bridge builder. And the builder of bridges, one, one side of the land always remains on one side of the river. And the other side always remains on the other side. And the bridge builder creates a union between them, and he travels back and forth between the two sides of the water. And the priest has a duty to speak to man about the things of God. But he also has a duty to speak to God about the worries of men. And this second duty has not, both duties have been have failed miserably. The church has failed miserably in the last 100 years. Completely miserably it has failed since the death of St. Pius X in speaking to God in the name of men as God wants him to speak and in speaking to man in the name of God the way that God wants him to speak. And so today what matters is that even in our modern time, even in our wicked world, God has chosen that it must be the man of God who speaks in the name of the people. The Holy Eucharist is a sacrament. It is a sacrament and a sacrifice. You receive Holy Communion, you receive God himself. You unite to the Mass, and you are connected to God himself. You attend the Mass, and you are present at the crucifixion, and you are there with the priest. But if there is no priest saying the words, this is my body, if there is no priest saying the words, this is my blood of the New Eternal Testament, and so on, if he's mystery of faith, if he doesn't say these things, then God is not made present, the crucifixion does not happen, and you, the faithful, cannot participate in it. God has made his church hierarchical, that there are priests and there are the laity. There are the Levites and there are the faithful. And the Levites speak in the name of God, both ways. And the Blessed Virgin Mary said, you people of the 20th century, for instance, the modernists of Vatican II, you think that you don't need the priest to speak to God. You have become Protestant. The Protestants say, I don't need a priest to speak to God. I don't need a bishop to speak to God. I can talk to God by myself. But you cannot fulfill your Sunday obligation without the priest of God. You cannot fulfill your public duty to worship without the priest of God. And as the Blessed Virgin Mary wanted to make this very clear to the 20th century and 21st century, this century is no different than any others. It is still the will of God that the bishop of the church, that the priest of the church, the high priest of the church, Speak in the name of the people. And if they only speak in their own name, God will not hear. There's been a great movement in the last hundred years about the importance of the laity. And the laity, how the laity have to fulfill in the gaps because the priests aren't doing their duty and the priests are not doing their duty. And the laity have to fill in the gaps. The laity have to take the place of the priest. But the laity cannot take the place of the priests. There has been a great punishment upon our world because our leaders, the high priests of the church, that is the bishops of the church, and especially the bishop of Rome, the Holy Father, the Pope, have been disobedient to heaven. And the end result is the whole family suffers. Just as in a small family, if the father is a drunkard, if the father does not work, if the father beats his children, if the father abandons his family, it harms the whole family. And they cannot take the place of the father. So it is in our holy church. But, the Holy, but, but in our Holy Church, the Holy Father is more necessary than a physical father. The physical father is needed for us to have a family, but the Holy Father is needed for us to go to heaven. The Holy Father is needed for us to worship God as we're supposed to worship Him. The Holy Father is most necessary for the salvation of all. And in this age in which the Church has lost its power in the last 500 years, no one listens to the Pope. They stepped away from him beginning 700 years ago. And they began to step away from him more and more 500 years ago when the Protestant Revolution happened. And they continue to step more and more away from the bishop. So the bishop of God has no longer authority like he used to. It used to be in olden times that in every capital city, the king lived in a palace on one side of the square and the bishop lived in the palace on the other side of the square. And the bishop would sometimes come out of his palace and walk over to the palace of the king and slap the king around. And say, you are not following the law of God. You must follow the law of God. I speak in the name of God, and you are only a king. But now the, the kings will not listen to the bishops. The kings will not listen to the pope. And they, when the pope has lost his power for a long time. But heaven wants to make it clear. Though the church appears to have lost its power, it has never lost its power. 
Though the Pope has said that the church has appeared to be eclipsed, like, a, like the moon eclipsing the sun, the sun is still there in all its radiance. The sun is still there in all its power. All that must be done is the blockage of the moon to be removed away. And the sun still shines with the same power that it always shines. And the blockage of the sun of the last 100 years, this blockage is communism. This blockage is the evils that came forth from Russia. And remember in 1917, when the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to those three children and said, I will come later and ask for the consecration of Russia to my Immaculate Heart, and Russia will be converted, and then a period of peace will be given to the entire world. The October Revolution had not yet happened. Russia was the most, one of the most weak countries in the entire world and seemed so distant from Europe and the Americas and South America and Africa. How on earth could that country so weak and divided amongst itself, so torn apart that they ended the war late and they left the war early and they were failures completely in their fighting in World War I. And they, came, they started as failures, they ended as failures, a most weak nation. And how could it be that this nation is going to be the hand of God used as a scourge to punish the West for its sins. It is mentioned in the book of Ezekiel that a country to the north shall be used as a hand of God to punish the, the, the Israel for her sins. And Russia was used by the hand of God to punish Israel. And some of, uh, some, some of a faith, a parish, uh, a relatives of some of the parishioners or friends of some of the parishioners pointed out in recent times, right now in Ukraine, there are atrocities going on. One of them is that Putin is, uh, is massacring Catholics. He wants to support the Orthodox Church and hates the Catholics. And he's massacring Catholics. The Ukrainians are massacring each other. And what is the cause of all this massacre? The cause of this massacre and the wars of the last hundred years since communism, it is punishment of communism spread throughout the entire world. Russia has spread her errors. And the Blessed Virgin Mary predicted Russia would spread her errors in October 1917 to make it very clear there was no way any human being on earth could see that Russia was the great menace of the 20th century in 1917, October, and July especially. None could see that there was the, the, this was going to be the great menace upon the world. And yet right away, after the communist and Bolshevik revolution, they destroyed the nice socialists inside of Russia, the white Russians. They eliminated them. And then they immediately spread infiltrators into each government, so that by 1921, they were in every government in the world, every major government already infiltrated. They were the winners of World War II. The communists won World War II. And the errors of Russia spread and spread, and communism spread and spread, and millions and millions and millions of people were killed and slaughtered, annihilated, because of this menace. And who's to blame? The bishops of the Catholic Church. Many Hindus died, many Muslims died, many atheists died, many Protestants died, many people that don't know what religion they belong to died, many animists died. And who is responsible? The bishops of the Catholic Church. Because there's only one true church, and this church is meant for all men. And these people have lost their souls and lost their lives because the bishops of the Catholic Church did not fulfill their duty of charity. They did not fulfill their duty of justice. There was a priest named Father Cummins in Australia who was saying the Latin Tridentine Mass against the will of the bishops. He was going into dioceses and dioceses like we do today, going from one diocese to another, saying the Mass without permission, the true Latin Mass, being called excommunicated. And when his bishop wrote to him and said, Father Cummins, why are you coming to my diocese without permission? Why are you saying Mass without permission? You have, to have, you have to have permission to do that. I am the bishop. And Father Cummins wrote back to the bishop, the gentle, quiet, timid Father Cummins, wrote back to the bishop and said, Holy Bishop, you have the duty before God in justice, according to your holy office, to feed the flock in your diocese. You have the duty before God, according to holy justice, to teach them the true faith. You have the duty of holy God and holy justice to give them the true mass, and you are not doing it, and your flock is starving, and your flock is dying. And I am a priest of God. I have a duty of charity to fulfill, to give to them what you have refused to give by a duty of justice. Therefore I am obliged to go into your diocese without your permission, and against your will, 
to feed the flock with the faith, to give the flock the true holy sacrifice, the mass, to prepare them for heaven because you are not doing it. Fulfill your duty of justice, and I will not need to fulfill my duty of charity here, but I will fulfill my duty <coughs> elsewhere. Do your duty, bishop. And the bishop refused <coughs> to do his duty. And this has been the story of the 20th century. Catholic bishops refusing to do their duty. Even when we look at the situation in, of abortion, which is a sin against the sixth, fifth commandment, thou shalt not kill, <coughs> and therefore a much lesser sin than the sin of idolatry, than the sin of having false worship, than the sin of belonging to false religions, but still a terrible sin that cries to heaven. And who could have stopped the legalization of abortion? Catholic bishops. But the Catholic bishops refused to stand up. And therefore many Protestant babies, and many atheist babies, and many Hindu babies, and many animist babies, and many babies that were not Catholic, besides them that were also Catholic, were <coughs> sacrificed to Satan in the murder of abortion. Why? Because the bishops did not do their duty. Bishops matter. Bishops are necessary in our holy church. But they are not just necessary in our holy church. They are necessary for the whole world. God said to this 12 bishops, Going therefore, teach ye all nations whatsoever I have taught you, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And I will be with you even unto the consummation of the world. Yes, he's with us till the consummation of the world. Though he also prophesied there will be many periods when bishops shall fall down, especially the bishop of Rome. <coughs> and bishops shall not do their duty before God and man. We have a duty before God to tell you the truth. A duty before God to bring you the holy sacrifice of the Mass and the holy doctrine of our church and the holy sacraments. But we also have a duty towards man. We have a duty towards our flock. <coughs> and our Lord Jesus Christ also said, Beware of the evil shepherd, because the evil shepherd does not take care of his flock. The evil shepherd does not love his flock. The evil shepherd simply uses his flock for his own self own self-aggrandizement for his own benefit. And there have been countless evil shepherds in the last hundred years. Well, all around them people are dying. All around them there is persecution and death. As long as they get back what they want, they are fine. And this even happened before Vatican II. When the holy bishops of Mexico lied <coughs> to Pope Pius XI. And the holy bishops of Mexico said, Pius XI, the communist, satanic, evil leader of Mexico, if you make a deal with him, he will stop persecuting the Catholics. And he says, there need be no more bloodshed. Why? Because the Cristeros were winning the war. The Cristeros were about to make Mexico fully Catholic again with a Catholic ruler and a Catholic <coughs> kingship. But they can't have that. And who stopped it? Who was responsible for the massacre of the Cristeros? Who was responsible for the destruction of Mexico? The Catholic bishops. These were the ones that were responsible. And they wrote to Pope Pius XI, We're the bishops of Mexico. We know the situation in Mexico. Tell the Cristeros to lay down their arms and stop fighting the enemies of God. Tell them to stop fighting the Masons and the Communists. And there, there will be peace. And Pius XI believed in the peace plan of the bishops. <coughs> He did not believe in the peace plan of heaven. And so he told the Cristeros to lay down their arms. And 30,000 of them were machine gunned to death in one day. They were massacred. Why? Because of the bishops. <coughs> Catholic bishops are necessary for everyone. They are not just necessary to ordain priests. They're not just necessary to confirm. They're not just necessary to baptize. But one of the duties of the bishop is to judge and to teach. And the bishops have not judged rightly. The bishops have not taught rightly. And they are responsible for millions and millions, if not billions, of souls in the last 100 years going to hell. And the Blessed Virgin Mary gave the answer. What do we do? Give up on bishops? Give up on priests? Blessed Virgin Mary said no. Blessed Virgin Mary said no. 
My church is established by my son. And he made the church consist of bishops and priests and the faithful, of Levites and the non-Levites. And it is the will of God that the Levite must offer sacrifice. Remember that one day Saul, who had committed so many sins, Saul committed so many sins and yet God did not abandon him. God did not give up on Saul until he committed one final sin. He was waiting for Samuel to come and offer the sacrifice before he would fight a battle. And Samuel, like a true priest, was late. And he was late, and he was late. And Saul became impatient. And he said, Samuel is late. Samuel is not on time. Therefore, I will offer the sacrifice in his place. After all, I am the king. I am the anointed of God. I was made the king by God. And he offered the sacrifice. Remember, it was a sacrifice to the true God, not to a pagan God. Samuel came in, and they had just completed the sacrifice. And Samuel said, why did you do that? You cannot fight the battle, and you cannot go in charge until you have had the sacrifice offered, and only I can offer that sacrifice, and you did not wait. Therefore, God left Saul, and he never returned. Saul became reprobate at that moment. Saul became abandoned by God at that moment because he took the place of the priest. The Blessed Virgin Mary said, Russia must be consecrated to the Immaculate Heart by the high priests of the church, that is, the bishops, in union with the Holy Father, who is the chief bishop of the church, because they must speak in the name of man, not only the name of God, but in the name of man. When you go to trial, you have an advocate. You have a lawyer to, to protect you. You have a lawyer to speak in your name when you stand before the judge. And if you don't have a lawyer, you will be condemned. We all need advocates. We need lawyers before God. And God has determined that the lawyer that he requires to stand before him is the bishops of the church. And they have refused to stand before them in their duty. What have they said in recent times? We are here to end poverty. The church is not here to end poverty. We're here, here, here to stop violence. We're not here to only to stop violence. We are here to spread the kingdom of Christ, and that will stop violence. We're here to spread the kingdom of Christ and give truth to souls, and that will bring peace. The only peace that matters is the peace of heaven. That's the only peace that matters. <clears throat> Finally, we have a wicked pope, Pope Francis. And this pope... Says, I am going to, on March 25th, consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Finally fulfilling the request of Our Lady of Fatima. And he asked all the bishops throughout the world to join with him this day. After the sermon, we'll have the consecration because it'll be approximately the right time in, in Rome. We'll have this, that, that to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The good popes didn't do it. The mediocre popes didn't do it. Now we have a wicked Pope, and he stands up and does it. And many say this consecration can't count because he's wicked and because he is not going to be doing it the right way with the right intentions. But we forget about the gospel. A few weeks before Jesus Christ saved our souls by dying on the cross, the high priest, Caiaphas, he stood in front of his fellow Jews and he said, do you not know, my brethren, that one man must die for the people, lest we all perish? And what did he mean? He said, one man must die, the crazy man, our Lord Jesus Christ. Because if he doesn't die, we're going to be beaten up by the Romans. We're going to lose our offices. We're going to lose our place in society. We're going to be killed by the Romans. That's what he meant. And what did he say? One man must perish for the people. He wanted to kill Christ because he hated him. He wanted to kill Christ because he was an enemy of Christ. And he wanted Christ's kingdom to end. That was what was in the heart of Caiaphas. Yet the Holy Ghost tells us, Caiaphas said these words because he was high priest that year. The high priest had to say those words. That one man must die lest the people perish. One man must die lest they perish and go to hell. One man must die to take on the sins of all the others upon himself that we might be saved. 
That's what the true meaning of the passage is. Caiaphas's personal intentions were wicked. Caiaphas did not convert after he said those sacred words. But when Caiaphas said those words, he was speaking as the high priest of God. And the Holy Ghost went inside of Caiaphas and inspired him to say those words, though his heart remained wicked. Because priest has power because he stands in the place of God, and he received his priesthood from the hands of God. Therefore he has power from him. Now the Holy Mother of God asked, the bishops of the church, no matter how wicked they might be, no matter how liberal they might be, no matter how many Pachamamas they want to worship, the bishops of the Holy Roman Catholic Church are still representatives of God. They are still the descendants of the apostles. They are still members of the Holy Church. And when these bishops fulfill the request of Fatima, and it must be the bishops, especially the bishops of dioceses, who right now are gathered together in their cathedrals. It is interesting that on this day, like the day 2,000 years ago, when Caiaphas said those holy words, sacrileges happened. On this day, when bishops throughout the world offered and consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, in fulfillment of the request of Our Lady of Fatima, in union with the Holy Father, there will be many sacrileges. There will be sacrilegious masses. There will be sacrilegious holy communions. There will be many sacrileges. But heaven will look down and see, what was my request? I want the priest of God, as priest of God, speaking in the name of the people. He must say, Lord, we consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And in the consecration today, the Holy Father does say, let us consecrate ourselves, the church, humanity, and especially Russia and Ukraine to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. It is clear there the emphasis is especially on Russia and Ukraine, the only country mentioned. Russia and Ukraine are essentially the same country. As Kiev was once a center of Russia and they're still a Russian people. And they were part of Russia in 1917 when the communism was, uh, when Our Lady made her prophecy. And, and, and they're still part of the Russian people. So especially Russia and Ukraine, consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Then there shall be a triumph. Is it too late? Yes and no. The consecration is too late to stop the spread of communism because communism has already spread throughout the entire world. And Our Lady did say they will regret it and they will consecrate too late after Russia has already spread its errors. Our Lady prophesied that Russia will spread its errors and Russia has. She prophesied that the answer was the Pope to consecrate Russia to the back heart of Mary. She prophesied that it would be done late, too late, and that the prophecies, all her prophecies have come true. Russia did become a great power when no one could see that in 1917. Russia did spread its errors and heresies throughout the entirety of the world, including the Holy Roman Catholic Church. It's a communist-run church. It's a communist-run society. The proof of it is the reaction of the countries in the recent crisis the so-called crisis of the coronavirus. What happened? The countries are under the dominion of Russia and under the dominion of their communism. All her prophecies came true. Then she said it will be done, but too late. Too late for the conversion. And yet, after it is done too late, what's going to happen? There will be the victory of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Many say that this cannot be because Pope Francis is too wicked. Some say that he's not the Pope, that Pope Benedict is still the Pope. But Francis is still the head of the Holy Mother Church, and he still speaks in the name of the Church. He's spoken many wicked things as a bad father that has led many souls to hell and done great damage. But on this day, we fulfill the request of Our Lady of Fatima. Consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And this consecration being done in union with all the bishops throughout the world. Of course, there will be some bishops who will refuse to do the consecration. And all that is required is Our Lady said three things. Russia must be consecrated by the Holy Father in union with the bishops throughout the world. And in this consecration, Russia is being consecrated. All the bulletins and all the billboards say everywhere the consecration of Yasha, Russia and Ukraine to the Immaculate Heart of Mary is happening today, right shortly after the time of this sermon in Rome. And... We'll do it around the same time here, 
around the similar times in a similar time. And the bishops are as close to the time as possible of Rome throughout the world will do the consecration. The faithful can do a consecration. The priest can do a consecration. The atheist can do a consecration. The whole world can do a consecration. And it will do no good whatsoever. The consecration requested by Our Lady is the bishops. The bishops must do the consecration. And if the bishops do the consecration in union with the Holy Father, then there shall be the victory of the Magna Heart of Mary. Because the only answer to the crisis in the world today, as it always has been, is the priest the bishops, the high priests of the Holy Roman Catholic Church. The failure and collapse of the world has been because of wicked priests. Who started Protestantism? A wicked priest named Martin Luther. Who started the Illuminati? A wicked priest named Adam Weishaupt. Who, is, who created the first murder that ever happened in history? A wicked priest named Cain. And so we will find the priests are responsible for the great wickedness throughout the entire world. And it is the will of God that the priests also be responsible for the eradication of that wickedness. So pray for your priests and pray for the Holy Father and pray for the bishops of the church that after this consecration, many of these bishops truly convert. I believe personally that after this consecration, there will come a war and a purification the war may not be very long, but may be very bloody. And in this war, then the Blessed Virgin Mary will give her victory and she'll make the conversion of Russia. Some say Putin is a saint. Others say he's a devil. But the fact is, he is not a man of God. He is a man of the wicked country of Russia. And until Russia is converted, it will remain a wicked land. It needs to be blessed and consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And it's the will of God that the Immaculate Heart of Mary be the answer. We are all wicked. We all have, have sins upon our consciences and our nations and our families and our cities. And this is to be wiped away by the Immaculate Heart. Well, the Immaculate Heart is like a sponge that when it comes into contact with sin, it wipes it away. It cleans it out. And none of the stain ever touches that heart. That heart touches the sin and wipes the sin away. So we must have a great devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and, and, and that she is the answer to the crisis in our church today and she has decided to solve the crisis of the church as Christ has always done so through the mediation of his priests even in our modern times. So we're grateful that a wicked Pope who will hopefully convert and become a holy Pope before he dies is actually obeying heaven and consecrating rush to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and regardless of what his personal wicked intentions may or may not be. All that matters is that he is fulfilling the request of heaven, and therefore we can expect the results of that heaven has promised us, the, the conversion of Russia and the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So after the sermon here, we'll go ahead and do the consecration since it's close to the time, and then we'll complete the Mass. And at the end of the Mass also, there'll be the singing of the Te Deum and Thanksgiving for finally, after almost 100 years, to be able to make this consecration. And then there'll be a, 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 a lunch down at the refectory to which all are invited. We'll close that. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Act of consecration of the Immaculate Heart of Mary of Russia and Ukraine. O Mary, Mother of God and our Mother, in this time of trial we, we turn to you as our Mother. Thou lovest us and knowest, know, and knowest us. No concern of our hearts is hidden from thee. 
Mother of mercy, how often we have experienced under thy watchful care and thy peaceful presence. It never ceased to guide us to Jesus, the Prince of Peace. O Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, help of Christians, refuge of the human race, conquerors in God's battlefields. To thee and to thine immaculate heart, in union with the Holy Father and all Catholic bishops throughout the world, we entrust and consecrate the nations of Russia and Ukraine in this tragic hour of, hum of human history in order to fulfill thy request at Fatima. We entrust and consecrate the Holy Catholic Church, the mystical body of thy Jesus, suffering and bleeding in so many parts and tormented in so many ways. Look with compassion on Russia and Ukraine, torn by bitter strife and consumed by the fire of hatred, the victim of its own wickedness. O Mother of Mercy, Look down upon so many souls, tortured and troubled, in danger of being lost eternally by the errors of Russia, her atheistic communism and modernism, spread by Russia throughout the world. Look at all spiritual, material, and moral destruction, the suffering and fears of fathers and mothers, of husbands and wives, of brother and sisters, and innocent children. Look at the many lives cut down in the flower of youth, so many bodies torn to pieces in brutal slaughter. O Queen of Peace, obtain peace for us from God. Obtain especially those graces which can convert Russia and all human hearts quickly, those graces which can prepare, establish, and ensure the world peace promised, the, the peace promised by Thee. Queen of Peace, pray for us. Give the world the peace for which all are longing, peace in truth, peace in justice, and peace in charity of Christ. Give them peace of the arms and, and mind and, and peace of mind, that in tranquility and order the kingdom of God may expand. Grant thy protection to infidels and to those still walking in the shadow of death. Give them peace and permit that the Son of Truth may raise upon them, and that together with us they may repeat to, before the, whole, the only Savior of the world, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth amongst men of good will. Give peace to the people separated by error and schism, particularly those who have special devotion to Thee, and among whom there was no there, there was no home, where Thy venerable icon was not honored, though at present it may be hidden in the hope for better days. Bring them back to the one fold of Christ, under the one the, the true shepherd, Obtain peace and complete liberty for the Holy Church of God. Check the spreading flood of neo-paganism and modernism. Arouse within the faithful love of purity, the practice of Christian life and apostolic zeal, so that the people who serve God may increase in merit and number. All of humanity were once consecrated to the heart of thy Son. All our hopes rest in him, who is in all times sign and pledge of victory and salvation. O Mother and Queen of the world, forever we consecrate ourselves to Thee and to Thine Immaculate Heart. May Thy love and patronage hasten the victory of the Kingdom of God. May all nations at peace with each other and with God proclaim Thee blessed and sing with Thee from one end of the earth to the other the eternal Magnificat of glory, love and gratitude to the heart of Jesus, in which alone they can find truth, life, and peace. Amen.